Is it, okay, there yeah, we go. It's on. There we go, the red light. Yeah. There's a man that uh, I, 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 I support what um, head chief just said in such a strong way. In the Guzan and Nazo, Kurankura, Alan Kuram, Fumu Mao, O Limba Wambi. And, you know, I want to say thanks to everybody that has provided food from back home. My wife has put a lot into that from her business. And our ministry. But I tell you something, what's more important in the, than the natural food is the spiritual food. And there's a man that is on his way here. I just heard that he landed at the airport and he's with, I think he's with Prophetess Barbara and they're on their way right now. But he's a very well-known bishop in Tanzania. At one time, he was one of the best-known singers in Tanzania. And then he became the the youngest bishop. And he's a very good friend of mine. And before we started the Bible school here, we, we, we did the Bible school with him in Tanzania. And I met him in Germany. He was at a conference where I was speaking. And there was one time in the conference, power of God was very strong. I was out in the glory, like what we did. And when I was laying on the floor, the Lord said, I'm going to open up Africa. Well, it was after, right after that, that that man and I connected. We ate pizza together. We ate pizza together. And the invitation came to come to his ministry in Tanzania. His life was totally changed in that conference. By the things that we've taught you in the Bible school. The, rev the revelation of righteousness. Totally revolutionized his life. He had one church. Now he has over a hundred. And it keeps growing and growing. There's a mighty move of God taking place in his nation. He was a friend with President Mugafuli. Of course, he's passed away. But God has used him in a powerful place in his nation. He's going to be here in a little bit. And he'll also tell you how important the things are that we're teaching you. Because what we are teaching you, it will set people free. It'll set them free from religion. It'll set them free from witchcraft. It'll set them free from curses. It'll get them born again. Baptized in the Holy Ghost. It'll help. It, it'll, it'll give them revelation that, that they're sons and daughters of God. And the things that that you're learning from the word, it'll totally, totally revolutionize your nation. When you take these things and you grow in these things, it'll change your life. And every place you go, people will change. When they begin to see who they are in Christ. And I know that there are some of you 
that have pulpit ministry callings. And it's important that you study, learn, study, learn and start your focal point out of the epistles. Because that's where we're shown who we are in Christ. And then go out. Now we spent a lot of time in Old Testament in this class because we're talking about blood covenant. But in all the other classes, we spent a lot of time in the epistles. And the next class that I give will start next week. And we're going to give a foundation for end times. I'll not teach everything. There's no way I have the time to do that. But we're going to get the people started. And in that class, you're going to see how close we are to Jesus coming and taking us away. We're at the end. He's coming again. He's coming again. And we're going to learn a lot of powerful things from the Lord We are living in the greatest time of church history. We are living in the time of what the Bible calls the latter rain. And that's the greatest time of outpouring of God's spirit to bring So I'm telling you, what has begun with you as chiefs, God wants to take it and bring it out and out and out. I see villages saved all over this nation. Instead of darkness, when you look down from an airplane, you see dark and light. And you can tell where cities are and where, the, where there's just land. But in the spirit, if you'll do what God has called you to do, we could be up there in the atmosphere and look down on this nation. All you'd see was light. And that's what I see in Malawi. Where there's been darkness, the whole land is going to be filled with light. And you're going to be a you're going to be a part of that. Tell your neighbor, God's using you and he's going to keep using you. Hallelujah. Amen. He's going to keep using you. So I want to come back to this covenant. So he calls himself El Shaddai. When he manifests to Abram at this time. And he says in verse 2. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply. Will multiply. This covenant is to multiply. Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. What we yes, have is to multiply. Hallelujah. Amen. In this covenant, Panganolimeneri, God will give Abraham many descendants. Abraham will become the father of many nations. The covenant would continue through his descendants. They would be given the land of Canaan. The covenant will be an everlasting we have that covenant. We're in that covenant. Everlasting. Verse 3. And Abram fell 
on his face. Ndipo Abrahamu adagwa pasi chafufu mimba. He fell on his face. Chafufu mimba kupa. Can you see his honor to God? Mukuona ule mumena kupeleka Abraham kwa mulungu. To the Lord God. Kumpatsa mulungu ule. He fell on his face and God talked with him saying. Adichi wera mire chonchi pasi mulungu ana kana inati. Verse 4. Verse number 4. As for me, behold. Monga ine dzwaichi. Do you know what the word behold means in the Bible? Kodi mukudza maona kuti dzwaichi zvinotora za Bible. It means to get a revelation. Ndiye kwena kuti iwe utinge vumburutso. It means to see it. You need to see yourself walking in this covenant. You need to see yourself walking as a son of God. You need to see yourself doing the works of Jesus. You need to see yourself. You are, he said you can do the same works he did. You see, that's what the Bible does. It fills us up with the pictures of God. My God. You see, you're a son of God. You see what a son of God is. You see your covenant. You see how you're blessed. You start seeing it inside. You don't see yourself sick. You see yourself walking in health. Because you know it's in your covenant. You don't see yourself bound up by the devil or bound up by some witch. You see yourself free. Free from any curse. Blessed of God. And you see yourself going forward and setting people free, doing the work of Jesus. Behold. That's it. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. And thou shalt be a father of many. See, not just one. Many. Why did, why did he say that? Because all nations, people from all nations will be able to come in. I'm not Jewish by natural heritage. I've got some Irish in me. Other heritage. But you know what? I'm in the covenant. And you're in the covenant. We have come in through Jesus. Hallelujah. We were the weaker and became one with the stronger. We had nothing to give. He had everything. We got in on the better end of the deal. Why? Because he loves us. He loves you. He loves you. This covenant is the foundation of your blessing. In this covenant, it's because of this covenant you're blessed. Hallelujah. Verse 5. Verse number 5. Now, here's the thing. For 25 years, Abram and Sarah still have not, Sarai, have still not had a child. And they've been struggling. In fact, you know, do you, do you know what the word Sarah means? The what name? It means laugh. Can you imagine being a hundred years old, ninety-nine years old, and, and you're gonna have a baby? You're, your man comes to you, your husband comes to you, and he says, We're gonna have a baby. <laughs> She so they struggled with this. But you know, faith works by speaking. 
And this is what I'm saying. You want to get it in your heart. The word is there to give you the sight. And then you want those words that become one in you, God speaking to you. Then you speak out. And that's what he works with. He watches over his words. You tell your body, no, you don't. By his stripes, I'm healed. Now healing comes. You don't even pray to God and ask him to get rid of the devil. You just tell the devil to go in Jesus name. And you see the devil leaving you. Or leaving the people that you're praying for. See yourself blessed. Because you're and we learned that the word blessing means to bring forth good in every area I'm blessed. Hallelujah. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm not cursed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You speak that. Well, Abram, he needed to speak. He needed to start speaking. And what did he need to say regularly? I'm the father of many nations. Who are you? Hello? Like ah. last night, I met some people I'd never met before. They told me who they were. I told them who I was. When Abraham came in contact with people, yes, my, my name is Mr. Abram. But God, the Lord God said, I'm going to help you. I'm going to change your name. And remember, covenant is name. Uh, he said here in verse 5, verse number five get your it name number is no longer called Abram, but your name is called Abraham. 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 For a father of many nations. So every time, now his own say, Sir, who are you? You say that to me. Say, Sir, who are you? Who are you? Who am I? Abraham. Thank you. I'm acting like Abraham. Thank you. Abraham. Abraham. All right. You say the same. Who are you? Who are you? I'm I'm Abraham. I'm acting like him. Who are you? My name is Abraham. I'm acting like the Bible. Now, you know what I just told these guys? I don't have a son. I'm 99. And I'm the father of many nations. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me interpret properly. Ah, Akufusa, Sana bereke poro kuchibwezi, oro kuchimisa kuna kulikosa. Ali bekena kauti, ine ndine tate wa mitundu yochuruka. Akurangu la zimechifuwa chana zina muza, uti zina konda sinta. Ndiwe Abraham tate wa mitundu, wangu watenga mawaja, mkumazira nkulela yeka kuti nchibene hali. Tukumfana kodi. Simu kumbi manja kodi. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So covenant speaks. You want to speak your covenant. You want to speak the promise. You want to speak the word. The word is the covenant. I say it all the time. By his stripes I'm healed. Our church regularly when that virus Corona, virus came. every time we came together, we spoke. 
that we come forth with silver and gold and no plague comes near us. Hallelujah. Amen. He's brought us forth with silver and gold and there's no sick person among our tribes. Hallelujah. Amen. We spoke regularly. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I speak regularly. Great he. If you heard me preach any, I say it all the time. Greater is he. Greater is he, Greater is he that is in me. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, how you doing today? How are you doing today, Pastor? I am super and you. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm too. doing good. Highly favored. How are you doing today? I am great. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You understand? You want to speak regularly in your covenant. Let's, uh, let's turn over to Romans 4. Let me show you this. Okay, I see how the Lord's going to do it. I had today very strong to hit some issues on faith. Now, it, when you continue to read in, these verses, in Roman in Genesis 17, when you continue to read those verses, you see that Abraham was also his name was changed from his name was changed from Abram to Abraham. But Sarah also got a name change. And her name was changed from Sarai to Sarah. Which means now now look at this princess. She's 99. Abraham got to get this thing to work. He's looking at her. She's 99. You know, the man got to be stirred up for the thing to work. Come again. The, the man has to be stirred up for the thing to work. So you know what God said? Change your name to princess. You start looking at your wife as beautiful. We ought to see our wives as beautiful. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not just talking about for a sexual reason. That's not what I'm saying here. Come again. I'm not just talking about for a sexual reason. I'm talking about but, but my point is, is that Abraham and Sarah, they needed to see. They needed to speak that this promise that God had promised them comes to pass. And the thing is, Isaac is a type of Jesus. So there was a miracle that took place for Sarah to conceive. Now, yes, Abraham was the natural dad. But there was still a miracle involved. And so every time Abraham said his wife's name, he thought about the promise. He spoke the promise. Every time that Sarah said his name, she was speaking the promise. The father, you're the father of many nations. You're the father of many nations. Do you understand? Speak the answer to your problem. Okay. Your body says, I'm sick, I'm full of pain. You say, by his stripes, I'm healed. He took my... 
Osa ti kufaife amarume ato dafandi zomwe zanga kala za kare atu yai. Tukumvana kodi. You call it. Now, if you, go, you know, you go to the doctor and the doctor says, hey, is there anything wrong, you know, what's wrong with you? You can tell him the symptom, but inside, according to the word of God, I'm Upita healed. Kwa dotolo, mkumva, mtafotokosa, ni mwafotokosa, ni kumva zakuti zakuti mtu mkuma nkati mwanu, mkuma so ndine ota anikodi, ochilitsidwa. Osa to dotolo, if you can't do it, 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 if you So, I, I want to look at Romans 4. Aloma chapter 4. Because this is how the covenant works. It works by believing in it and speaking it. You believe this. This is the new covenant, the old covenant. You believe it. And you speak it. This is New Testament, Old Testament, through the blood. See your Bible as the testament. This is the covenant. This is your inheritance. So Romans 4, let's look at this. Aroma chapter 4 to Ereng. Aroma chapter 4. Are we learning something today? Hallelujah. Romans 4. Aloma chapter 4. In verse 1. I'm going to let you read 1 to 3. Pastor. 1 to 3. Got it? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, go ahead. Read it. Read okay. verse Aroma, 1. Okay. Aroma chapter number 4. Yeah. Verse 1, Greg, is a 3. Yeah, 1 through 3, right. Verse number 1. Nipotsono tizane na kuti Abraham. Koloratu monga mwatupi. Anandra jiani. Pakuti ngati Abrahamu. Anaetse do orunga machifukwa chanchito. Iye anakaranacho. So zita mandira. Koma kulinga kwa murungu ai pakuti lembo litani ndipo abraham anakhrupira murungu ndipo china ulengedwa kwa iye chirungamo all right then i want you to jump over to verse 13 tuwerengetso pano ti joe nusu yake ya namba 13 now listen to this bible veterani and we're going to do this together tipanga limozi zizi for the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law. Pakuti lonjezo lakuti iye adzakala olowa nyumba ya dziko rapansi sina patsidwa kwa Abrahamu ndi kwa mbeu yake mwaramulo koma mwachirungamo cha chikurubiriro but through righteousness of faith. So all this covenant promise is going to come by faith. Everything that you have, it came by faith. Even the Jewish nation was born by faith. You understand? Tumvana. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made of void and promise made of none effect. Pakuti ngati iyo alamulo anakala olo wa mnyumba pamenepo chikurupiriro cha yaesedwa chabe ndipo ronje zano la yaesedwa lopanda bag. Because the law worketh wrath for where no law is there's no transgression. Pakuti chilamulo Chichitira mkuyo. Koma pamene pali ramuro. Pamene po pali kulakwa. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. Chifukwa chake chirungamo. Chichokera mchikurupiriro. Kuti chikare monga mwachisomo. Kuti ronjezo likare chokazikika kwa mbe uzonse. Sikwa iyo achiramuro chokara. Koma mwa iyo what is grace? Grace is 
everything Jesus paid for. Everything. He paid for the sin. By becoming the sin. He paid for the sickness. Just like the testimony of the sister today. Why could she receive her healing like that? Because she knew Jesus paid for the sickness by taking those stripes. Why can you be rich? Because he was made poor. That you might be made rich. Never say you're a poor man again. Hallelujah. Never say you're a poor man again. You start seeing the riches of God in your life. You see, this is how faith works. Do you realize that everything in this earth was inside of God in vision form at one time? It was in him. He's the creator of all. Everything that exists came out of him. He saw it, he spoke it, it happened. We were created in his likeness. In fact, the Bible says that we were created in his image. It says that God breathed into man the breath of life. And the English says in the book of Genesis, and, and man became a living soul. But the Hebrew actually says, one version says, and man became a speaking spirit. You get it here, you speak it out. You get it here, and you speak it out. In Hebrews 4.12, the Bible says, for the word of God is quick. Uh, which means it's alive, it's a living word, and powerful, Amhamfu. sharper than a two-edged sword. It actually says in the Greek, a two-voiced sword. Well, let me ask you this question. Who's the first voice? Who's the first voice of the Bible? What is your Bible? Is your Bible a man's word? Is it the word of a man? What is the Bible? Whose word is it? The word of God. It's the word of God, right? So God gave, he, it came out of him. But we were made in his image. So that word that came out of him is to get into you. And you. And you. And you. It's to get into all of us. And then as it gets in us, we see it, we meditate on it. And then, woo, I see it. I see it. I see what he said. I see what he said over the situation. And then you act and you speak upon it. And that's faith. Faith has works and faith speaks. And so when, when God appeared to Abraham and said, I'm the Almighty, or I'm El Shaddai, he, he wanted him to think, hey, Abraham, I'm your source of everything. And what I said will come to pass. This is my promise. Hallelujah. 
This is my promise. And so he said, start calling yourself the father of many nations. My God. Start calling yourself the father of many nations. I tell you what, every day you should be speaking the word of God over your life. Connect this tongue with what's in you from the word of God in spirit and speak it out to where it automatically comes all the time. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, the devil works the other way. You know how the devil keeps the curse in the earth? People curse. They curse all the time. They speak bad all the time. And so that's how the enemy keeps that stuff here. If Jesus would have said all the stuff people say, that all, that all that stuff would have been in his life. Speak the word. Speak things in line with the word. Hallelujah. Mm. You understand this? Faith it gets it inside as a revelation. You know, I remember when I started learning to walk in health. I was, um, I was about 16 years old. And I got a hold of the revelation. By his stripes. You are healed. 1 Peter 2.24 Peter 2, By his stripes you are healed. Isaiah 53.4 He Isaiah bore your sickness. He carried your pain. Chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes I am healed. Hallelujah. Matthew 8, 17. Matthew 8, 17. Himself took my infirmity, bare my sickness. And when I got attacked with sickness, in the beginning, I remember walking my bedroom floor. I'm healed. I tell you, fever, you can't stay. Virus, you can't stay. Bad bacteria, you can't stay. I'm healed. By the stripes of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I learned. I used to be sick all the time. There's absolutely no way I could come to Africa. In the condition. But I've been here many times. Never taken any malaria tabs. I don't tell people not to do that. But I have never had to do that. And I'm so thankful. I've been attacked, but I spoke and I got my healing, and I know how to get it. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So you, you have, I, I see myself healed. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm 60 years old. But, and, and some people, they start seeing themselves, six, man, you're old. I still feel like a 16 year old teenager. And sometimes my wife tells me I act like one. <laughs> I feel young. You know, the word says we can have 120 years. So, head chief, man, I'm halfway. I'm halfway. Do you want to tell us your age? How old are you? You're 64. You're 64. So he and I, we've only, we've only lived half of our life. I'm not thinking, man, I'm 60 and I'm old. I'm not thinking, man, I'm 60 and I'm old. I'm not thinking, man, I'm 60 and I'm old. I'm thinking young. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, let's continue. So look at this. Verse 19. Verse 
It says, Pabonikuti. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace, to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed. What is that verse? Verse 16. Romans? Yep, 4. Romans 4, verse 16. Chifukwa, chache, chirungamo, chochokera, mchikurupiriro. Kuti chikare, monga, mwachisomo. Kuti ronjezo, likare, lokazikika, kwambe uzonsi. Si kwa iwo, achi, achiramuro, okao kakoma, kwa iwo nso, achi krupiro cha Abrahamu, ndiye koro life eto onse. Not to that only which is of the law, Osa but to that also mroka. which is of the faith of Abraham. Iwo nso, cha Abraham. You got to understand who Paul's writing to here. He's writing to Gentile believers. Paulo tu akulembira kwa hirene karatai. There, this is not just to Jews. And he says, who is the father, hallelujah, of us all. Well, how did he become the father? We're talking about all of us being in the same family. We're talking about all of us being in the same covenant. Verse 17, Verse number 17, as it is written, as it is written, Monga Quarembedwa. As it is written, Monga Quarembedwa. Remember Jesus when he was tempted by the devil in Luke 4? He said, It is written. You got to know your covenant. You got to know your covenant. Tell your neighbor you want to know what's in your covenant. How do you know what's in your covenant? How do you know what's in your covenant? You get to know this word. Fill yourself with this covenant. And I'm reading out of the new covenant. Hallelujah. We got a better covenant. The Old Testament is full of types and shadows. The Old Covenant is full of types and shadows. So as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead. Here it comes. Who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Verse number 8, 17. Yep. Monga kwarembedwa ndakazikika ndakazisa iwe kolo la mitundu ya mbili ya anthu pamaso pamulungu amene iye ama kurupirira amene ama patsa akufa moyo ndi kuitana zinthu zoti palibe monga ngati zilipo All right now let's think about this So we just had that example. Depends. Chipangaji sons. All right. You ask me who I am. Tafu se ni kutindi undani. Abraham. Ask me who I am again. Tafu se niso. Abraham. What am I doing? Kodi ndupangaji ane baba. What am I doing when I say that? I, I just told him I'm the father of many nations. But I don't have one son. I'm calling those things that be not. Do you understand? Amen. And he might say, well, you don't even have a son. And, and the, the devil, he'll do that all the time. He'll try to, well, you why, 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 why it's not working. He'll try to do that. He'll try to put all kinds of stuff there. To keep you from, from this thing from manifesting. You say you're healed. There's still pain in your body. And you say you're healed. You're calling those things that be not. As though they were. 
You're speaking what God says. That's the word of faith. And as you speak that out, it'll drive that thing out that needs to go. If you pray for somebody that needs a healing in their body, you lay your hands like we, we prayed for somebody yesterday. We laid our hands and we said in Jesus' name, out, we call you healed. We call the pain gone. And the chief said when, when he left that everything was gone. Hallelujah. Amen. I still remember praying for you that gave the testimony. Awesome. He, he, he came, he was drunk. And we were able to share the gospel with him. And he got saved. And thank God for your testimony. Well, you weren't so drunk, you didn't know what you were doing. That's good. And now what a great testimony. See, God called him saved. God calls him righteous. And now that righteousness has worked in his life and he's free. Free. You understand? So Abraham said, I'm, I'm Abraham. He called those things that be not as though they were. Who against hope? There wasn't hope here for he and Sarah to have a baby. It don't work. We're a hundred years old and we're going to have a baby and we're going to be the father of many nations. No way. Do, do you see this? There was no hope. There was no hope. And some, you are, sometimes, you know, anybody here been in that condition where, man, there's no hope. I, I've had I've prayed for people that have come and they've said there's no hope. The doctor said I'm going to die. There's no hope. Well, we prayed. We spoke. And they're alive today. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When the doctor says there's no hope, there's another doctor. And in this condition, when the body said we can't have a baby, God had already said you're going to have a baby and you're the father of the And it had even been written, it was down in the covenant. This is your covenant. It's written. What does it say? What does it say? Hallelujah. Amen. All right, we're going to take another 10 minute break. And then we'll come back for one more session. And then at the end of the session, we're going to receive communion together. Hallelujah. Amen. So we'll take. We'll, we'll take what 15 minutes oh i go diga bin so be right back we're going to look at isaac in a little bit amazing all right